living with encephalitis is kind of like a, a paradigm shift. You're still the same person on the outside, but on the inside, your, your perspective has changed. It's life altering, it's life changing. I remember calling my husband and telling him goodbye for what I thought was the last time. I know way too many people who had professionals who did not know what they were seeing and did not know how to act. Every moment someone's brain cells are dying and the people are going to die if somebody doesn't act quickly. My name is Maddie Bomi and I have autoimmune encephalitis. I was 16 when I was diagnosed. I started to have these very seizure-like episodes which just got progressively worse with time and then I started to struggle in school like I couldn't read. I had encephalitis 14 years ago. It was viral. Um, I happened to get mine from a mosquito uh, while I was traveling on business in another country. I had this onslaught of fatigue. It felt like you're trying to wake up from anesthesia. I didn't know how to walk or talk. I was a completely different person and it almost felt like I was living a lie. Uh, I had meningoencephalitis in 2010. We don't exactly know how I got ill. I kind of have these still pictures of getting to the ER. My wife was told by the doctor that he didn't think I'd survive and if I survived I wouldn't be functional. Encephalitis is a condition and it can be caused by um, a viral disease, a bacterial infection, or just your autoimmune system reacting to any kind of foreign body or itself. People will go through a battery of tests before they can find someone who might recognize and know to test for encephalitis from a primary care doctor or even an emergency room doctor to eventually getting to a neurologist or a doctor who is educated about encephalitis. The attempt to get a diagnosis was 27 months. The first neurologist I saw when I got back to the States had thought I'd had a stroke. I would call his office and tell him other symptoms that I was noticing, and they told me to quit calling and that he didn't want to see me anymore. And it made me question myself, am I making this up? A lot of doctors wrote it off as a psychological issue. At one point, I was sent to a psychiatric facility to be admitted. When someone with autoimmune encephalitis is admitted to a psychiatric facility, they're, they're not gonna get better, so they're not gonna get out. There's a disintegration in our healthcare system. The A doesn't talk to the B, and the B doesn't talk to the C, and it never gets to Z. You see people that are bankrupt because they weren't able to work. They've gone from one doctor to another and gotten no care. One of the things that would help tremendously is for doctors to be more aware of encephalitis. One message to the world would be that encephalitis is a condition that exists. I mean, that's the point we're at with this. We've got to find a way to pay attention to what's going on and uh, think about these possibilities. <laughs>